Hello YouTube and welcome to my very first Let's Play of The Binding of Isaac. I am user KimonoboxFox and uh, today I'm going to be playing as Eve. Uh, my overall goal for this installment is uh, just to shake hands a little, introduce myself, and uh, eventually, potentially, I am aiming to start a series about teaching how you can play better in The Binding of Isaac. Uh, very excited about the upcoming release of Rebirth, and I suppose I should uh, put some sound on at very least to begin with. But uh, yeah, big fan of this. Uh, have had this since uh, before Wrath of the Lamb. I actually have some 600 hours on my Steam account, and uh, I have been going at this since about five or six months after the game hit Steam to begin with. So yeah, let's uh, start the day by uh, talking about Eve. Uh, Eve is one of the less popular characters to play in a lot of Let's Plays, and part of this stems from the fact that she has the weakest tier damage value of any of the characters in Isaac. Uh, this is made up for, however, by the fact that she is a very technical character. Um, she has a lot of abilities that are related to her red heart value, or whether she has taken damage in a room or not. And uh, I am, I've actually backed myself into a corner here, viewers, where I am going to die, unless I time this very carefully. And unfortunately, I did not pull that off. So yeah, uh, one of the big benefits of Isaac, if uh, you are new to the game, is it is a roguelike, and it does not really have a static story structure like uh, its predecessor, The Legend of Zelda. So if you die, you're not repeating the same material over again from an incom inconvenient place like your house or the entrance to the dungeon and having to do all the puzzles over again, but uh, you're instead thrust into an entirely fresh game, uh, which works better because it's uh, all procedurally generated. Uh, these rooms will have different contents each time. Some of the uh, set pieces like rocks and fire and uh, poops and whatnot will be in different places, and of course the enemies and uh, the items you find will be different. So it's a little bit like Minecraft in that respect, uh, to talk about a familiar modern day comparison. Um, one of its older ancestors would be g games like uh, dungeon crawlers like uh, Rogue or Toe Jam and Earl uh, would be a good comparison, more a better comparison because it's live action. Uh, there are also some elements of uh, Bullet Hell, so if you like, like, uh, Ikaruga, or, um, more recently some of the Iosis games, uh, it's comparable to those. There's a lot of dodging projectiles and, uh, hitbox stuff. But, uh, here now, dealing with some mulligans, and uh, I will be using the official name for a lot of enemies. I know uh, if you watch other LPs of the series, for instance, Northern Lion, uh, he he calls them as he sees them, popcorn people or whatever, but uh, I like to go by consistent terminology. And uh, that'll help you have an idea of what's going on when you're distracted, say uh, you're multitasking, and uh, you're not looking directly at the screen. But uh, mulligans are basically harmless, but they contain flies, and uh, they have a random chance of self-destructing, which uh, also launches bullets at you, uh, red tears. And uh, at the end of every floor in Isaac, you will face a boss. This is Monstro. He is uh, one of the original Binding of Isaac bosses uh, from before the expansion release. He's quite quite simple in his fight pattern. You can bait him into doing this little jump after you a lot if you stand near him. Um, other than that, he only really has two moves. He'll grin, and he'll spew that uh, scattergun of tears at you. Uh, the other move he uses when you're further away, he will try to leap to your location, and uh, then he scatters tears in all 
directions instead of just at you. And uh, the main challenge with Monstro is just watching the arcs of the tiers, making sure you're not underneath them as they land. Uh, they'll go overhead, but it's generally better just to keep your distance. And uh, if you can get him locked in his jumping animation, not that one, the little, the little jump, uh, it makes him go down very easily. Um, there was a time where I absolutely detested running into Monstro. He was the most common boss in Vanilla Binding of Isaac, and one of the more tedious to fight. But um, he has actually become increasingly rare, as the uh, number of bosses, especially for the first set, that's uh, Basement Cellar, uh, the first two floors, for those of you wondering, I will call those sets. Um, he is now increasingly rare, because there are a lot more bosses to run into for the first floor. So, yeah, uh, Isaac, basically, uh, you just keep your distance, you keep mobile, and uh, you keep the pain on the enemy. Uh, Eve is particularly good for this in some ways, which we will get to. And I have just picked up a tarot card, which, um, for the uninitiated, tarot cards, you can hold one at a time, and uh, they are one use. Uh, each card in the Major Arcana, of which there are, I believe, 22 cards, uh, has its own unique effect. The stars we will get into in a moment uh, is one of the teleporters. It takes you to a specific room. So here we have a... It's go it goes by many names, a blue heart, a soul heart. I call them faith, or faith hearts. So if you're ever wondering what faith is or what I'm talking about... Uh, they're basically like, uh, if you've played Doom or Quake, they're like armor pickups. So, they're not refillable. Once they're gone, they're gone, but they do protect you from dying. So, I am not going to, if you look at the mini-map at the top left corner of my screen, go to that darkened room there. That would be the store for the floor, because uh, that is locked and I do not have a key. Um, looking at the center, you can see I have a display next to my arrow slot uh, for coins, bombs, keys, and I am on empty at the moment, so I'm moving on. And here we get a little bit of what Isaac, or Eve in this case, is thinking. No TP. Um, the curious thing with Isaac is uh, the alternate characters are not so much their own characters as Isaac wearing different accessories. So in this case, Isaac sort of has an identity crisis. And uh, he's currently dressed up in pretty much drag and makeup to be Eve. Whoa, 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 whoa. Uh, here we got a bunch of hoppers and a trite over there in the left. And uh, they're pretty much alternate versions of one another. Trites jump further. Um, hoppers can get lit on fire, and then they gain more health and speed and become more aggressive. So uh, hoppers have the potential to be a greater threat than trites, but only if there are flames in the room. Here are a pack of gushers, and uh, gushers shoot blood tears randomly. So they are not ever aiming in a specific direction. You don't want to move a lot, because that makes you more likely to run into their tiers. Whereas other enemies uh, that shoot directly after you, you would want to run around, which we may get to run into a few of those here soon. Um, another thing to remark on is um, I am in the basement, but uh, as of Wrath of the Lamb, there is always an alternate version of each uh, set. The basement has the cellar, the caves has the catacombs, the depths has the necro uh, the necropolis, I should say, not the necronomicon, uh, the necropolis, and uh, the womb has utero. So the first four sets of floors each have a harder alternate version that you may get at random. And uh, here's a gish from another of Edmund McMillan's games, which I actually have not played gish, but I have read that it's basically about being a slimeball creature trying to save your uh, hostage girlfriend. 
and uh, you do so by navigating puzzles that involve changing your consistency as a slime creature, so you can become sticky or slick or solid or combine any of those three traits. Uh, here we've got Claudies, which uh, are basically a reverse of Gish. They fire in an, in the four compass directions instead of uh, in corners in a cross shape. Uh, of the two, I would have to say I dislike Claudies more because you have to get into their line of fire to hit them. But uh, the combination can be quite nasty if you run into them both. Uh, this is a Tinted Rock, or a Faith Rock, as I'm fond of calling them. Uh, noting the little uh, cross there, if you can see that, um, which is one of the first indicators of what it is. I mean, other than that, the, sh the shape is similar to, say, this rock here. But uh, these always contain an item, and usually it is a Faith Heart, or Soul Heart. Um, but in this case, it was a locked chest, and I do not have a key, so... Bad luck there. And, uh, in early Isaac, a good portion of the gameplay is uh, just resource management and knowing when to use bombs or keys or when to take a hit. Um, how to avoid hits, obviously, is a big thing. Which, uh, these gapers, which are the uh, eyeless babies, were giving me a little bit of trouble because of the room layout. And uh, also the fact that I do not have a high damage output, which uh, a lot of people who do not like Eve, uh, usually it's because their first experience with her is having a difficult time clearing out enemies in the early floors that uh, would not be an issue for, say, Isaac or Judas or even Samson. But Eve does get better as she goes along. And unfortunately, I don't have a key here. But we're going to get right through that, because I have the stars, which teleports me to the loot room of the floor. Or treasure room, if you prefer. And this is the uh, kamikaze, or the uh, suicide vest. Um, which uh, is basically unlimited bombs at the cost of damaging yourself a... I think it's a half heart, it might be a full heart, uh, when you utilize it. Um... It may not seem like such a great item, but again, I'm a very technical thinker, and if you are clever, um, you can make even the crappiest seeming items work for you. Boom! And uh, there I just played the High Priestess, which uh, summons an explosive mom foot that does quite a bit of damage, and a little bit of a secret uh, for those of you who have played Isaac before that you may not even be aware of. Uh, you can use the uh, High Priestess when there are no enemies in the room. Uh, she will target you, and you can move away, and uh, that will destroy rocks if you have no bombs. So there's a little something you may not have known. Uh, I'm a little bit iffy about whether to take this Faith Heart or to leave it, as I am going to conduct a deal with the Devil. Now, before I enter this room, uh, let me talk a little bit about deals with the Devil. There are behind-the-scenes factors on whether you encounter one of these when you finish a boss or not. The door always appears after you have finished a boss. Um, it may stay if you leave the room, but only uh, after leaving it once. Um, so you can leave if you absolutely have to and hunt for a heart container and come back and it may still be there. But once you leave a second time, it's gone for good. Um, the other thing is, the likelihood of these doors appearing is based on whether you have taken red heart damage on the floor or not. So as you can see, um, I'm quite good on red hearts. I did get nicked a couple times with my uh, faith heart from the last floor, but that damage does not count towards hurting my odds. Uh, what would is if I did get nicked and lose red heart. Um, and that drops your odds considerably. Uh, the other thing is uh, avoiding damage in the boss fight is cumulative with uh, avoiding red heart damage for the floor. So even if you do get hit in the floor, you should try not to get hit in a boss fight. That will improve your odds of finding this. Uh, other things that help, uh, collecting the pentagram 
Um, I believe a few devil items help. Playing the uh, Book of Belial or the Devil card can also increase your odds, uh, I do believe. But uh, let's go ahead and check out what Old Scratch has to offer. And this will be a common scene, this uh, Zelda-esque setup. Uh, and Satan wants your heart containers here. Uh, he will take empty containers, he will take filled containers. Um, but each of these will permanently deplete one of my heart containers if I purchase it. I'm not going to take the Book of Belial here because I do have the uh, Kamikaze Vest. And uh, it would be redundant to waste a spacebar item that I have been so graciously given by the loot room. But I will take Guppy's Tail, which is a passive. And uh, as you can see, that does count as damage. Um, not that it's really significant here, but you can kill yourself with a deal with the devil. Uh, we'll talk about how to circumvent that later to get more out of deals. Uh, but for now, I am going to leave this item... Uh, simply because I cannot efficiently uh, take advantage of that at the moment. I want my containers, as much as I'm a risk-taking player. Uh, so, the last thing we're going to do before we leave the floor is uh, there is a secret room on every floor, one per floor. Um, and typically, more often than not, it will be in a gap surrounded by three to four rooms. So in this case, if you look at my mini-map, uh, the loot room is to the right of the gap above, the store is above it, and uh, there is the room I'm in and the room up and to my left. And uh, this is usually the layout where you will find a secret room. And uh, sure enough, uh, occasionally you will get a map shape that does not have a gap like this, and then more often than not, the secret room is sandwiched between the store and another room. Uh, it's very popular for the secret room to be next to the store. Um, I will actually bomb my way into the store just to demonstrate. You can use the secret room to bridge uh, a room with the store if you are out of keys, so you do not have to unlock the secret room, or the uh, store I should say. And I actually am going to convert my money into a key here for the future which is one of the rare times you will see me buy keys from the store. Uh, the cool thing is, when you leave a store, even if you did not unlock the door, the uh, locked door is gone. So you can bomb your way into certain stores, or even teleport into them, and uh, be able to revisit them as often as you need to for that floor. Uh, the last, very last thing, I know I said the secret room was the last, so we got a little bit of an arrow here telling me, go back, go back, leave the floor, get out of here. Uh, screw you. Screw you, buddy. Um, I'm actually going to go into the curse room. And, uh, newcomers to the series, or even, uh, some old salts, uh, will be nervous about this room, and, uh, it is a little bit of a health sacrifice to go in. Uh, you do not want to go in before you have tried for the Devil Room of the Floor, but, well, you could go in like I am now and uh, not have it count against you since I have Faith Hearts, but entering, half a heart damage, leaving, half a heart damage, and uh, this is one of the reasons you would go into a Curse Room, is occasionally you will get Devil Room themed items for free. Uh, there will also be red chests that spawn in here, which, um, as much as they can have bad loot, do have good things, and sometimes they even teleport you to the Devil Room. Um, normally I am not a big fan of this item, this is Brimstone, um, and some of you more experienced players would say you are crazy for not liking Brimstone, but um, I have hated it ever since it got nerfed in uh, Wrath of the Lamb. It used to be a lot longer lasting and uh, more powerful. But uh, Brimstone permanently replaces uh, your regular tier effect with a chargeable laser. The laser does multiple hits of damage over a short period and penetrates both objects like this pedestal and enemies. So um, if you're on a bad run and you don't have the best upgrades, uh, Brimstone can be useful, there are other upgrades that sync with it, but in the current Isaac metagame, it's kind of a relic. It would be like 
taking a broadsword into combat versus a gun. Uh, the tiers are usually more conventional. For Eve, it might not necessarily be such a bad thing since she's so weak off the bat. Uh, but enough talk, on to the second set. And uh, now my environment is going to change for those new to Isaac. Uh, I am now in the catacombs, the harder version of the caves. And uh, the second set will have different enemies. And the catacombs and caves both have a theme of having lots of holes in the ground. So, uh, an item to bypass these obstacles is very important. Uh, there's a good example of when uh, the vest can be useful. If you take damage, uh, you can promptly explode and attack enemies around you. And I was already screwed on red heart damage there, so... Um, I basically blew my way out of the room and escaped. And yes, um, unlike in Zelda, when you get these rooms that seal with enemies in them, um, with the exception of bosses and mini-bosses, you can lay a bomb or use another explosive type item and blow open the doors to escape. The enemies will still be there when you get back, but in an emergency, uh, you can run for health or you can try an easier room. So, uh, do... Put that into consideration. Uh, one thing you'll notice now is my size has actually increased, um, and that is on account of Eve's ability, Whore of Babylon. Uh, Whore of Babylon triggers when you have exactly half a red heart left, and uh, what Whore of Babylon does is to increase the size of your hitbox, which makes you an easier target. Uh, that is the one disadvantage of it. Uh, but in return, your damage output increases to be greater than Isaac's, actually. Um, it is paled by Judas's damage, but your speed is also increased. So it's kind of an emergency backup defense for Eve. Uh, she becomes more deadly when she's low on red hearts. And uh, you can combine this with shielding from soul hearts and uh, keep the effect without uh, endangering yourself. In this case, I don't exactly have that luxury, and uh, that curse room wants me to suicide into it, but I can't. Uh, at this point, I have the choice to either go for the uh, room with the uh, corny poop and flies again, or I can go for the boss. And uh, normally I would avoid the boss till later, but that room um, really wants me dead. This may be the end of my run. And it's the Husk, which is a very difficult to dodge enemy. Um, he is a faster Duke of Flies. Uh, those of you who are new to this uh, have not seen him yet, but uh, basically, yeah, he spams the room with tears, and eventually he'll start dropping flies and spiders. Um, he is definitely not a boss you want to run into when you're low on health, and uh, I got a bit unfortunate on that run. So, looking at my time here, um, it looks like I'm getting near the half hour mark. Um, I will go ahead and wrap this up, and uh, I will start again on a, another upload. Uh, take care of yourselves.